Here we're going to show how to graph trigonometric or sinusoidal functions specifically uh, using sort of a shortcut method. So sometimes we're asked to graph the original function, so in this case it would be sine of x and then transform it, but we can do it sort of all in one go if we use this shortcut. First thing I'm going to do is I've drawn an axis here and I'm going to create the starting point. And sine starts right on the axis of symmetry, so we have to label that properly. I'm going to look here and it looks like it's been shifted pi by 4 to the right and 1 down. So I'm going to label that point pi by 4 and negative 1. That dictates the starting point. So you can think of this axis as being y equals negative 1. Then we focus on the amplitude. It's 3. That means it's got to be 3. The max will be 3 units um, above the axis of symmetry and the min will be 3 units below. So I know I'm going as low as negative 4, because that's 3 units below negative 1. And I know I'm going as high as 2, 3 units above. And then I can actually just go ahead and draw my sine graph. And if we're just asked to, to graph one period, it's going to look something like that. Not perfectly symmetric, but pretty good. So that's the sine graph. What number have we not taken into account? The 2 here, and we know that affects our period. So the period is equal to 2 pi over that b or k value, so 2 pi over 2, which equals pi, which means the period of our function will be pi. Uh, a nice way to break it up is if we break that into 4s. So every pi by 4 is sort of a main point, meaning we go pi by 4 further and we'll hit where the max is. Another pi by 4 and we'll hit the new 0, another pi by 4 and we'll hit the point of the minimum, and another pi by 4 will hit uh, the end of that first period. So then you just add pi by 4 to your starting x value here, which is pi by 4, and we get pi by 2, then 3 pi by 4, then pi and then 5 pi by 4. And you can see that the period is in fact pi of our graph because we're starting at pi by 4 and we end up at 5 pi by 4. That is pi later. So that's a very nice way of only drawing one curve for a fully transformed function, right? We've taken all four transformations into account. Vertical stretch, horizontal compression, horizontal shift, and vertical shift. Um, but we've done it in sort of a nice clean way rather than having a bunch of graphs on one set of axes.